Hello, this is week four of my viewer viewer request video blog. The topic this week is how to do your cast on with your figure eight stitch. I'm also going to show you a couple other little tips you can do with the figure eight as well to really just make the whole process a lot easier for you. Okay, so here we go. Now, um, if you don't know how to do the figure eight, I do have a video for that if just watching me on here isn't enough. Okay, so this is your figure eight stitch. Now, if you're wanting to cast it on, same concept as doing, <clears throat> excuse me, doing your e-wrap cast on. You just follow the same pattern back. But there is a little tip I want to throw in here that can make things a little easier down the road. Just get a piece of string and place that over that first pass down. And we will be using that in a moment. Then go back over doing your e-wrap on your way back. Okay. And this is your cast on. As you can see, each peg now has two loops on it. Same with the other side. Your figure eight stitch matches. We're not alternating. We're not switching the stitches. You can do that, but if you do, you'll get a different design. That's crochet hook. Here's my knitting hook. Okay, so now, oops, at this point, pull bottom over the top. <laughs> okay, let's do the other side. Oops. Put those back on there. It's a very simple way to cast on, and you do this with any of your rake stitches. Uh, you just follow the, you do the pattern down and you follow the pattern back. And that is your cast on. So after one row, this is what it's going to look like with your cast on. Now, I usually leave this one here for just the first couple rows and pull that off and just pull it down, let it do its own thing. At this point, we want to take this different color string oops, that I got up in here. Okay, there we go. And pull that down. Oh, I made mine a little short. You should make it a little longer. It doesn't really matter. Tie it in a knot down here. You'll cut this out when you're done with the project. But what that does is a couple things. As it goes, I know I'm always excited to see how a project is coming out and how it's turning out. So I want to sit there, like, as soon as it starts showing, I'm trying to pull in a little bit. And sometimes, our impatience will get little pulls in the fabric because see this bottom row is very loose so if you're pulling on this you can end up with the loops like that most of the time they'll stretch back in when you're done but sometimes they won't so this will keep that even and does another thing as well move my light down a little bit see how it marks out those that first set of loops now what we would use this for is, um, I wouldn't suggest this next part for a blanket because with a blanket, you want it to be as stretchy as you can get it for the most part, especially with your cast, like with your figure eight stitch or any of your rake stitches for a blanket, they're going to be very stretchy. So if you have a tight cast on or a tight cast off, it's really going to affect the appearance of your blanket and you're not going to be happy with how it turned out. So, if it's a blanket, leave it like this. You can still put that in there just so you're pulling it down the same throughout the whole project and you don't end up with the, the pulled loops. That's fine. Then when you're done, you just cut that, pull that string out, and go about your merry way. <laughs> but what I'm talking about 
is for scarves. This is such a lovely stitch, but sometimes these loops on the end are a bit, a bit big, or maybe you did, this is a super stretchy cast off. You don't want that for a scarf. Now, if it's a blanket, that's actually a pretty good cast off. That or the sewn cast off. Um, there's other cast offs you can do, but those ones are very, very, very stretchy. But as you can see, there's an issue with both of them. Both of them are kind of loopy. They don't really match up exactly. This super stretchy one matches up okay. But after you use it for a little while and it stretches and stretches and stretches, they will end up blending in. Okay, so we want, this is actually a, a neck warmer is what it's going to be. We want both ends of this neck warmer to look the same. So what we do is here is the end that the string is coming off. So we're going to start on this other end. And if I would have had the string in there, only these very top stitches would be pulled out and they would actually be separated and it'd be very easy to see. This is where you need your crochet hook. Get on here, you pull up that very last peg, not peg, pull up that very last stitch and you take, on, show you that again, take this last stitch, take the next one to it, which again, if you have that string in there, they're going to be separated very nicely. It's going to be easier to see. So you got the first one and the second one. Take that second one, pull it over the first. Now we go get the next one. Put it on and pull that back one over it. Oops. Show you that again. Okay. Put the first one over the second. So this is actually the second hoop that's on there. So we're going to the third. Pull it over. And then we're going to go to the next one. And you just do that all the way across. But I want to show you the whole thing so that you can see what to do when you get to the end. And if it's too tight for you, you can throw in the extra ones in between. And that will loosen it up some. I'm trying to keep this in focus. see these loops are pretty big so it typically you'll still have a, a very decent stretch with it but it also gives it a, a very even ending okay now here is okay and you want to get this as close over to that okay so at this point see that's very even smooth finished looking at this point you are on your last hoop and you got the string from your original cast on. Pull that through. That locks it, you're done. Just take this string, weave it up through, and cut it off. But at this point, that's done. That's what that end looks like. So we're gonna go over, I'm gonna show you, and we're gonna do it on this second end as well. Oh, sorry. I get looking at the project and forget to make sure it is in your view. I'm just doing this real quick so you can see the finished product, how it will look. Because there's nothing worse than spending all this time working on something and then you don't like it just because of your cast off or your cast on. So this is a way that you can kind of correct that a bit oh yes and I have so many people ask me where I get my crochet hooks and my loom hooks I actually make these um, I will be selling them on my website they're not posted up yet to sell really just because I'm still working on the pattern these ones are done these ones are a new one the fabric is actually glued to the stuff underneath and I found something that's softer because I wanted them. Um, my problem is um, carpal tunnel. With the carpal tunnel when I'm putting pressure on the hooks when they're really really hard 
it just sends like a pain right through here and my whole thumb will kind of want to lock up on me. So I've noticed if I use something softer, like I could feel it right here, but that's just because I have carpal tunnel. But if I'm using something softer, it's a lot easier to work with. Okay, so you've seen both ends of this look completely different because of the way they were done. But again, I left my strings. I, I'm not weaving them in right now. That's something you can do later. But see, look at this. Now this neck warmer will have completely matching ends. And it's done. The only thing I have left to do is throw a toggle on it. And there it is. All right. I really, really hope this video helped everybody out. Thank you so much for requesting it. Um, don't forget to subscribe, like, share. Definitely, definitely send me requests. Let me know what it is you want to see because that's how I do these videos. That's how these ideas come. They're not from me. These are from my subscribers and viewers. So again, thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.